The current coronavirus pandemic has led to an increased interest in the use of ultrasound as a tool for assessing parenchymal lung disease. Now, this is not a new concept. It's already very popular, particularly in critical care units across Italy. It has, however, yet to form any real uh, major role in daily practice within the UK, and with good reason. My name is Tom Sample. I'm a consultant radiologist at the Royal Brompton, and I'd like to give you a very quick introduction to point-of-care lung ultrasound. It's potentially good uses within the care of patients with ARDS in normal practice. Some of the limitations that will be encountered when trying to establish this technique within a COVID-19 population uh, and some advice as to how maybe this technique, as resources become more limited, may have a role to play in the current crisis. The video image on the right here shows normally aerated lung. The pleural surface can be seen sliding backwards and forwards as a patient breathes in and out. Now, point of care lung ultrasound has a lot of terminology attached to it, most of it really quite unhelpful. The first term, um, potentially useful, is the so-called A-line. This is a sign of normality. As sound waves hit the pleural surface, a reverberation artifact is caused, causing these lines which parallel the pleural surface deeper within the lung. Now, of course, this isn't deep within the lung, it's merely a reverberation artifact of the pleural surface. There are more subtle A-lines here, put them all together, and you can really see that this is a reverberation artifact of the pleural surface. But what this means is that the lung immediately underneath the visceral pleura is aerated, i.e. it's normal. Now, every now and then, on this same video, you'll notice a line which faces in the opposite direction. So this is a line perpendicular to the pleural surface. These have been termed B lines and are supposedly abnormal. They suggest that the lung immediately underneath the visceral pleura is not well aerated. That could be fibrosis, it could be atelectasis, it could be a small amount of consolidation. It's an entirely non-specific sign. Now, one or two of these lines per field of view is considered to be normal, within normal limits at least. However, to have multiple lines running perpendicular or vertical down the screen, multiple B lines, is considered pathologic. These are those multiple B lines. Presumably the lung immediately underneath the visceral pleura here is not as well aerated as it should be. Compare those two videos. The image on the left here is the first video that I showed you with several lines running parallel to the pleural surface, A lines, and the occasional vertical B line. This is normal. Look again at the video I just showed you, the one on the right hand side. It's very difficult to see those horizontal lines, but you can see multiple vertical lines, multiple B lines, pathology. Not specific, but there is something underneath the visceral pleural surface. You can take that one step further. This patient has absolutely no A lines at all, and almost sheet like B lines. These are coalescent B lines multiple vertical lines all joining together into a sheet of artifact. Again, this suggests that the lung underneath the visceral pleural surface is not well aerated and is less well aerated than the example I showed you previously with multiple discrete B lines. Again, this is entirely non-specific. If you take your subpleural disease process one step further to consolidation or atelectasis of a substantial portion of the lung, you'll be able to see lung tissue. Running through that tissue, you may see some air bronchograms and potentially even branches of the pulmonary arterial system. It's a role for colour or power Doppler imaging to demonstrate flow within those vessels. Now, the first thing to remember when thinking about applying this technique to patients with COVID-19 is that there are plenty of reports of patients with symptoms and positive viral swabs who have completely normal imaging, even by CT. Clearly, ultrasound is not going to provide a screening test which can rule this disease out. Potentially worthwhile roles of imaging include confirmation and quantification of pulmonary involvement in this disease. There are many different suggested methods of scanning the chest for lung assessment. This one's taken from a review article in Anesthesiology in 2015 and is specific to ARDS. The chest is divided into right and left halves, and then each half further divided into superior and inferior regions, roughly a half each. Each of those regions is then divided into three. 
large anterior and lateral regions, and then two regions in the posterior, as far back as you can get on your patient, bearing in mind that most of these patients are A, large, uh, and B, lying supine on a, an intensive care unit and difficult to get posterior images. Each of those zones is examined in its completeness, each rib space uh, separately examined, and then assigned a score from 0 to 3. 0 for normal sliding lung with those A lines that we showed you previously, 1 for well separated B lines, those vertical lines uh, perpendicular to the pleural surface, 2 for coalescent B lines, and then 3 for complete consolidation or atelectasis. In this way, each of the six zones on each side of the chest can be summed to a total score out of 36. That score can then be recorded daily as part of a, a daily follow-up routine. The examination can then potentially be repeated, increasing the positive end expiratory pressure to assess for effective recruitment. The reason this works in ARDS normally is that ARDS is characterised from an imaging point of view with this anterior to posterior gradient, well aerated lung anteriorly, completely atelectatic or consolidated lung posteriorly, and then a variable band of ground glass in the centre. This patient does not have COVID-19. You can imagine that if you were to image using ultrasound, the anterior portions of the lungs, they're well aerated. There's going to be a reverberation artifact from the aerated lung underneath the visceral pleura creating those A lines. If you were to look in an intermediate area of lung such as this, you might see multiple B lines. If you looked over here, at areas which are slightly less aerated still, you may get coalescent B lines. And if you were to look posteriorly, you'd end up with this solid appearing atelectatic lung. This way, the sectors that I just showed you would demonstrate anterior, middle and posterior segments with a gradient from normal to complete atelectasis. One of the classic features of COVID-19 is ground glass in a peripheral location within the lungs. Now that causes a problem when it comes to assessing ARDS using ultrasound. The anterior lung here is not well aerated underneath the pleural surface. There's ground glass there. We're going to have B lines anteriorly around the side interspersed with areas of A-lines when you have well aerated lung underneath that pleural surface, i.e. this is a very patchy condition with no definite gradient to be demonstrated. There is, however, a subset of these patients in which the typical ARDS features may be demonstrated and there may be a role of ultrasound in guiding positive end expiratory pressure. This is another young patient on our adult intensive care unit currently on VV ECMO. If you look at his CT, it shows another classic feature of COVID-19, this crazy paving ground glass in the uh, anterior lungs and very dense consolidation posteriorly. The second video at the bottom right of your screen is the CT acquisition with increased positive end expiratory pressure. You can see that clearly there's a difference here. The posterior lung is better aerated, still not well aerated, but better than it was before. If you were to ultrasound this patient at time point zero on normal ventilator settings, you'd see dense atelectasis or consolidation from the front all the way around to the back. However, on increasing the peak, this intermediate regions may well show progression from total atelectasis to the appearance of B lines suggesting increased aeration. So in some of these patients, you may well be able to use this typical ARDS uh, ultrasound technique to guide end expiratory pressure. These patients will need to be selected very carefully using their plain film, their radiography and their admission CTs to see that ultrasound is an appropriate method of guiding their ventilation. A far easier use for ultrasound would be when resources are limited, when you cannot manage a daily chest x-ray to show progress over time and instead are limited to bedside techniques that can be performed by the AICU staff themselves. The two CT images here, the one on the left is at admission, the one on the right at day three. And you can clearly see the right lower lobe has collapsed. Now having a daily ultrasound may well demonstrate on that first admission uh, 
time areas of well aerated lung anteriorly, areas of ground glass as you get to the middle and back portion of the lungs. However, repeating that ultrasound on a daily basis, by day three, you'd be seeing an increase in the number of V lines in the mid part of the lung, and you may well be able to demonstrate that atelectasis or consolidation in the right lower lobe without, an ultra, uh, without a chest x ray. The other potential uh, use here or benefit would be better directing the resources that you do have, because patients having a significant change in their ultrasound, if subclinical, may well trigger you to say this is one of our patients we really would like a chest x-ray on today. This is not one to miss. Now clearly there are some significant limitations to this technique. The patient at the top left of your screen currently has another fairly similarly seen pattern or distribution of disease in COVID-19. This patient has extensive ground glass anteriorly, however it's sparing the subpleural lung as a result there is a potential that ultrasound in this case would significantly underestimate the extent of this patient's disease. This is why selecting patients carefully for ultrasound follow-up will be key if it is to become a useful technique. The use of an admission chest x-ray, admission CT where possible, would provide useful information in which patients can and cannot be followed up by ultrasound. Another significant limitation demonstrated in the image at the bottom right here is subcutaneous gas or surgical emphysema. Not particularly uncommon in an ITU situation. Gas outside of the chest wall or indeed a pneumothorax will completely obscure your view of the visceral pleura, rendering ultrasound completely useless for lung assessment in these cases. So in summary, ultrasound is able to show artifact relating to the level of aeration of the lung immediately beneath the visceral pleura. Well aerated lung causes reverberation artifacts known as A lines. Poorly aerated lung produces vertical lines perpendicular to the pleural surface, referred to as B lines. Two or three of these lines is considered normal, however, more of those is considered pathological. It is a completely non specific finding and is seen in fibrosis, in atelectasis, in edema. Uh, however, the ability of ultrasound to show in real time changes related to ventilated pressures and so on have given it a role in standard ARDS. It's important to remember, however, that the COVID-19 cohort often have patchy disease and in these patchy cases, it may not be appropriate to use ultrasound to guide to positive and expiratory pressure levels. There may be a potential role, however, in frequent follow-up, particularly as resources become more scarce if your radiographers are finding it difficult to perform daily chest x-rays, there is a possible role for ultrasound in frequent follow-up. Now more than ever, it's incredibly important that we work together as a team. If your critical care staff are interested in lung ultrasound, try not to be too dismissive. There are potential roles and the best way of instigating any image-guided procedure or image-guided diagnosis is to work together. Dr. Ben Garfield, one of the consultants on our adult intensive care unit, has produced an aid memoir to accompany this presentation. This includes the image of the chest wall with the sectors to be scanned, and an adapted version of the scoring system used in the paper from anesthesiology cited within this presentation. There are several planned videos to follow this up, uh, one demonstrating the changes associated with patient proning, and of increasing the positive and expiratory pressure in patients with COVID-19 and a more generic non-COVID related presentation covering uses of ultrasound within respiratory medicine including things like pleural effusions and pyema, pneumothorax, diaphragmatic motion and assessment of laryngeal motion. If there are any questions feel free to contact me on the email below uh, or via BSTR.